tell us about your journey with the Bible, why it's so powerful for you, why you have really anchored your life into this book. You know, John, I cannot separate uh, my walk with Jesus from God's work and the mm. impact of God's word on my life. Mm. Um, you know, you can believe in Jesus, but who is this Jesus you believe in? Yeah. If you're not getting it from Scripture, then you're not going to have the right thoughts about Jesus. The, mm. Look at the Gospels. Yeah. Yeah, that's where we learn about Jesus. Yeah. What does Jesus think? You, yeah. you can't know what Jesus thinks without yeah. the Gospel. You can imagine what Jesus thinks. Yeah. And you can imagine, well, uh, because Jesus uh, is full of love, which indeed he is, uh, then that means that he would never, ever send somebody to hell. Nobody will ever go to hell because this Jesus is so full of love. And yeah. you could go, that would even make sense if right. all the Bible told us was that Jesus is full of love. Yeah. But that's yeah. not all the Bible tells us. That's right. Jesus said more about hell than any other person in the Bible. Yeah. So now I look at Jesus and I, I say, this Jesus that I'm following, you know what? I'm not his um, speech writer. Uh, <laughs> I don't write the script for him. He writes the script for me. I'm the Ooh, follower. That's him. good. And so my, my job good. Uh, is not to give Jesus a makeover and make him look better so that our current society with what we believe will be drawn to it. Because yeah. if I do that, who they'll be drawn to is not the real Jesus. It, it only works if it's really him. Yes. And so what our culture desperately needs is him. And you can't know him and follow him and grow close to him and know his thoughts and memorize his thoughts and words unless you go to God's word. Yes. So that's it. I mean, so, yeah, yeah I've been doing a Bible read through and I've been, um, you know, there's the parts that you're listening to, to in Leviticus and you've got all of the skin diseases and the offerings and the, all the kinds of things. And, and you think, well, this isn't really doesn't seem pertinent. And then, you go, well, God's got a purpose and God yes. had a purpose and yeah. all of that. But I'll yeah. tell you what, I came to Jesus reading the Gospels. I mm. came to Jesus uh, as as this 15 year old mm. reading uh, in my bedroom at night in our basement Whoa. reading a Bible mm. and that's how I know him to this day and, I, and I, mm. let me just say something about my wife Nancy who yeah. is struggling with advanced uh, stage do. 4 cancer um, and uh, been some bad news there was actually a procedure yesterday that was mm. amazingly uh, effective based on what we know so far but it doesn't take away um, most of the cancer in her body. Um, mm. it, it just hopefully will give her more time. We keep praying for God's healing. We pray yeah. for God's healing every single day without exception for the last four years. Wow. But here's what happens with my wife. Uh, she goes to bed much earlier than I do. I get up in the morning and normally she is um, reading her Bible, mm. reading great Christian books and she's a journalist and wow. she sometimes does this for hours wow um but it, it's without exception it's every day wow and uh my wife is an unbelievable example of mm. eternal perspective where she thinks like jesus she is godly in her thinking Wow. And we talk freely and openly about the possibility that God may take her home through this. We all know we're going to die. It's just a question right. of when, right? That's right. Yeah. And so we, we, we talk about this and then what God has accomplished. And she has said to me several times, I would not trade my cancer for anything in terms of how it has brought me to know him better. And wow. she actually recently wrote something that I, in her journal that she read to me, and I said, can, can we put this in our Eternal Perspective Ministries blog, which we did, and uh, the name of it is, um, My Cancer is God's Servant. And she's got a passage of scripture wow. in there where all things are God's servants. It's about his providence and his sovereignty. All things wow. are God's servants. Well, does all things include her cancer? Of course. Woo. And so she then show, shares how... Her cancer has been a servant of God in her life. Now, 
And if you're the school of thought, oh, no, and I've gotten several responses from people who say, oh, no, cancer is from Satan. God, God isn't about cancer. God doesn't send cancer. God doesn't use cancer. God has nothing to do with cancer. Well, you're not reading the Bible. I mean, the Bible portrays him as a God who is above all things and uses all things. And that's why, John, and, and this is an example of the impact of Scripture in my life, when we started Eternal Perspective Ministries, uh, I thought of 2 Corinthians 4, where it says these light and momentary sufferings are achieving in us an eternal weight of glory, which wow. far outweighs them all. Wow. It's not just that one day we'll be done with all the bad stuff. Wow. That's true. The scripture promises that also. Wow. But it's saying yeah. God is using them. They are achieving. They are tools in the hand of a God who loves you to wow. produce Christ-likeness in your life. Wow. And God is achieving the eternal weight of glory through them. And then it says, therefore, and these became the theme verses of our ministry all these years, Therefore, we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are unseen. For the Oof. things which are seen are temporary. And that's our culture, our world, yeah. and everything around right. is temporary. But the things which are unseen is eternal. 